What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Talking Girls, presented by Wise Acre Brewing Company. I'm Kelsey Wright Johnson, and joining me today from Boston is the team reporter and host, Amanda Flugrad. Thank you for being here today. Yes, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. You guys are coming off a big OT win. So you are, is it three and a half games now? Three games now? Yeah, they're on a three-game win streak right now. Yeah. Three-game win streak, a few games back from the number two seed of the Raptors. Now, the Grizzlies are still kind of clawing their way into even the play-in round. So we've got you guys tomorrow. We know what's on the line for us in this game. What's on the line for you and what's going to be the key for you guys going into this game? Yeah, you know, I think the biggest thing, and, and we were talking about it before, this Celtics team, I, I feel like they're finding that rhythm at exactly the right time. I think it was really that Nets matchup where things were a turning point for them. Um, and I know that a big difference and a big emphasis for Brad Stevens has been the Celtics defense. And he said he really wanted them to assume more of a defensive mindset, have more of that defensive DNA when they go out there. And they really showed that against the Toronto Raptors um, with their transition defense and everything. So it was super impressive what they were able to do. And I just think that they're continuing to build with that confidence um, moving forward. And there is good news, obviously, Kemba Walker, he is still on a minutes restriction, but each game he's getting more of an uptick in minutes. Um, tonight it was 30 to 32, Brad did cap him at 32, um, but having him back, kind of easing him back into the rotation and just getting that experience and that time I think has been so valuable. So I think for this Celtics team, it's just trying to continue to to ride this momentum um, and figuring out the defensive side and, and really just working off these last few games of, of how they're doing really well and, and kind of building from there. All right, so you talk about Kemba. We on the Grizzly side have suffered three big injuries, uh, two to our starting lineup and then one our backup point guard. Having Kemba Walker back and, I mean, capping at 32 minutes, I mean, the Grizzlies would love to have Jaron Jackson Jr. for 32 minutes, yeah. but how does that affect, I don't know, team chemistry as he comes back in or even looking forward uh, at the playoffs? He, you know, it's interesting because he said one of the biggest things is, is obviously he wants to play, right? And it, and, it, and it bugs him so much as a player to have to kind of come in for short, short stints and then be pulled out, but it's trying to kind of find that rhythm. And so I think the biggest thing that's helped this Celtics team is the, the, the depth that they have. We've seen the bench go off and them kind of get that time knowing that they're going to have to step up. And we know that, you know, Marcus Smart is such a great player. So when Kemba's out, you know, next man up mentality, it's going to go to Marcus Smart and having that experience. Experience. Um, I do think that it was it's a major bummer for him having to come back and having you know three months off and then still having to go through a minutes restriction I know that th that was something he had even said you know with Brad Stevens he's not going to let him play more he's even you know pushed for extended minutes and he knows Brad won't do that so it's more so he's just trying to deal with it but I think it's also too knowing in the back of his mind that they're building up that's the plan with him is each game he's going to play more and more so that he will go back to his normal workload once these saving games are over. So I think it's kind of looking at it as the light at the end of the tunnel for him in that way. And, and the team looking at it like that is that he will be back fully come playoff time. All right, now I love to talk playoffs and I want to talk playoffs. So we are a few wins away from that, uh, obviously the play-in tournament and then eventually playoffs. Let's talk about the game just tomorrow really quick. You talked a lot about your defense, specifically the transition defense you brought up. The Grizzlies are one of the leading teams in the league in transition points. Is that going to be one of the keys for the Celtics tomorrow? A hundred percent. I think that really it's for the Celtics team just trying to build off what we saw against the Raptors and kind of them using that blueprint against the Grizzlies um, and just needing to communicate more. Um, you know, Daniel Tice has, has had some great games together and he's even said he's really focused on just trying to be the anchor point for the Celtics defense. He's talking a lot more. And I'm sure as the guys have told you, this different environment that they're in, how quiet it is how much more communication plays into it and how they're having to talk to each other more. Because if you're hearing the other team talk way more than you are, you know, it just kind of throws things off. So I think that more so it's about communication and then just staying on a string defensively for sure. Yeah, we're all just trying to figure out this bubble and it goes with the guys as well. <laughs> it's so, it's so crazy, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's at one point you look and you say, wow, basketball is back. They're playing again after this hiatus and like you said the bubble's working so i mean knock on wood that everything stays as is but definitely very different than you know what we're used to all right i've got a little piece of wood right here too 
So I'm going to okay. knock on it. Okay, good. I, I know I just talked on my table too. Amanda, thank you so much for your time today. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, and Grizzly fans, you can get more coverage on grindcitymedia.com.